Ron Hubbard was an American writer known for being the founder of Scientology, a religion that aims to free individuals from their sufferings and limitations through a spiritual practice called auditing. Hubbard led a adventurous and multifaceted life, but it was also controversial and shrouded in darkness, marked by numerous contradictions and disturbing aspects. In this video, we will attempt to profile him based on available sources, comparing official Scientology accounts with independent versions from journalists, biographers, and former followers. Hubbard was born in 1911 in Nebraska to a military family. From a young age, he displayed a strong inclination for writing and exploration, traveling to the Far East, Europe, and Latin America. Although he earned a degree in civil engineering from George Washington University, he did not complete his studies. In the 1930s and 1940s, he gained recognition as a science fiction, fantasy, adventure, and Western writer, publishing hundreds of stories and novels in popular magazines. Some of his notable works include Final Blackout, Fear, Typewriter in the Sky, and Slaves of Sleep. In 1941, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy during World War II, initiating his military career. However, Hubbard's military record was far from illustrious. He claimed heroic feats, such as sinking two Japanese submarines, rescuing survivors of a cruiser, and sustaining injuries that left him blind and paralyzed. Official sources, however, contradicted these claims, revealing incidents where Hubbard's command caused damage to ships and subjected him to investigations and disciplinary actions. His physical and mental condition was deemed precarious, and he was honorably discharged in 1946. After the war, Hubbard turned to the pursuit of a new science of the mind called Dianetics. In 1950, he published his most famous book, Dianetics, The Modern Science of Mental Health, proposing a theory that divided the human mind into analytical and reactive components. The reactive mind stored traumatic experiences, called engrams, negatively influencing behavior and health. Dianetics offered a method to eliminate engrams and unlock the potential of the analytical mind through a form of two-person psychotherapy, where an auditor assists a pre-clear in reliving and erasing negative experiences. Hubbard claimed that Dianetics could cure any illness and transform individuals into superior beings called clears. The book enjoyed great success, leading to the founding of the Dianetics Foundation, an organization dedicated to spreading and teaching Hubbard's method. However, Hubbard soon faced criticism and opposition from the scientific, medical, and religious communities, accusing Dianetics of being pseudoscience, a scam, and a public health threat. Additionally, conflicts arose with collaborators and associates who accused him of embezzlement, fraud, and plagiarism. The Dianetics Foundation went bankrupt in 1952, and Hubbard lost control of his creation. Undeterred, Hubbard continued his research, expanding Dianetics into the realm of spirituality. In 1952, he founded the Hubbard Association of Scientologists, which later became the Church of Scientology in 1954. Hubbard introduced the concept of the Thetan, an immortal spirit inhabiting the human body, which had lived through numerous past lives in different universes. The Thetan had lost its original nature and power due to engrams accumulated in past existences, requiring liberation to rediscover its true identity and abilities. Hubbard developed a scale of awareness and abilities that the Thetan could attain, along with increasingly advanced and costly auditing processes to aid progression. Hubbard claimed to have discovered the secrets of the universe and life, codifying them into a vast and complex doctrine based on thousands of writings and lectures. Hubbard declared himself the founder and leader of Scientology, positioning it as the only salvation for humanity threatened by dark and hostile forces. Surrounded by devoted followers, Hubbard created a hierarchical and authoritarian structure to manage his organization, rapidly expanding worldwide with churches, missions, training centers, and counseling centers. He established strict rules for adherence, 
demanding obedience and financial contributions for the dissemination and defense of Scientology. Hubbard arrogated the right to punish and expel anyone opposing or criticizing his authority and doctrine, labeling them as enemies, suppressive persons, traitors. Hubbard's life was far from tranquil or ordinary. He constantly evaded those accusing him of illegal activities. To avoid arrest or prosecution, Hubbard frequently changed countries, names, and identities, yet justice caught up with him. In France, he was convicted in absentia for organized fraud. Hubbard not only broke the law, but also became involved in various scandals and controversies, contributing to his myth and fame, but also drawing criticism and opposition. Engaging in the occult, he performed magical rituals with scientist and black magician Jack Parsons, seizing Parsons' wife and part of his wealth. He married twice without divorcing his first wife, facing accusations of abuse, violence, bigamy, and attempted murder. He attempted to establish a colony in Morocco, declaring himself the leader of a Scientology community, but had to abandon the project after a coup in 1955. Later on, Hubbard founded the Sea Organization, a fleet of ships housing his most loyal followers on a mission of spiritual research and rescue, which in reality subjected them to a regime of discipline and absolute obedience, exploiting and punishing them cruelly. Hubbard declared war on the U.S. government and agencies, considering them his main enemies, attempting to counter them with legal actions, propaganda, and infiltration. Hubbard masterminded Operation Snow White, the largest espionage operation against the U.S. government, leading to the arrest and conviction of 11 Scientology members, including his wife, Mary Sue. He pursued and attacked his former members and critics, viewed as threats to his authority and doctrine, subjecting them to intimidation, harassment, lawsuits, defamatory campaigns, and covert operations. To cope with these challenges, he created the Guardian's Office, an internal Scientology organization tasked with handling legal, security, and intelligence matters, implementing the fair game policy, whereby anyone hostile to Scientology could be deprived of all rights and subjected to harmful actions. Hubbard revealed the secret level OT-3, recounting the story of Xenu, the galactic tyrant who allegedly exterminated billions of Thetans on Earth with atomic bombs 75 million years ago. Many consider this story, presented by Hubbard as a historical and spiritual truth, as evidence of his delusional and fantastical imagination. Hubbard withdrew from the public scene in the 1970s, ceasing public appearances and communication with his followers, leaving control of the organization to trusted collaborators like David Miscavige, who became the de facto leader of Scientology. He isolated himself on a California ranch, surrounded by a few assistants, plagued by health issues, psychotropic drug dependency, and paranoia. Hubbard died in 1986, under mysterious circumstances announced only days later when his body was cremated and his ashes scattered at sea. Although Hubbard left a will naming his heirs and successors, it was contested by some family members and former Scientology members who suspected it had been forged or manipulated. Hubbard's life has been a source of numerous controversies and many questions. Scientology's organization portrays him as an exceptional and brilliant man who discovered the deepest truths of the universe and life. On the other hand, his detractors denounced him as an imposter and a criminal. Hubbard remains a controversial figure of our century, who, through his life and work, gave rise to an empire, Scientology, that has had a significant impact on American society and culture, but has also sparked fierce disputes and accusations. His life and work continue to be subjects of study and debate, and they will remain a source of interest, doubt, and inquiries in the years to come.